Hello everybody. Welcome to Spring Boot course with REST API, MVC and microservices. In this session, let's understand about Spring. What is Spring? What is Spring Boot? What is the relation between Spring and Spring Boot? All these details we are going to understand in this session. Let's begin. So in order to understand the Spring or Spring Boot, so we need to go to the Spring official website that is a, a spring.io. When you go there, you will be seeing the home page like this. The spring.io will have Spring. Now it is by VMware. Earlier it is by Pivotal. Now VMware actually owns this Spring thing. And you can actually see uh, what actually Spring does with Java. Spring makes Java productive, Spring makes Java modern, etc. and etc. And you can actually see uh, so many other things like uh, why Spring, what are different projects. And here you can actually see there is a Spring Boot, then Spring Framework, Spring Cloud, Spring Data. These are all Spring projects actually. And apart from that, you can also see Spring Tools 4, that is uh, actually the Spring Tool Shoot to develop Spring applications that can go as a plugin uh, to uh, other IDEs as well. Okay, and we have something called Spring Initializer that is going to be our next video. Okay, so let me actually take you to that Spring.io directly over here. So Spring.io, so you can actually see here all uh, related things. Spring makes Java productive. Spring makes Java reactive. Uh, Spring makes Java simple and Spring makes Java modern. And what Spring can do, you can write uh, microservices, you can make your applications reactive, Spring Cloud, web apps, you can make serverless applications, web driven applications, you have Spring Batch, and so much of things actually. Okay, so whenever you write uh, a simple uh, REST controller, a REST service, uh, this will be the code actually. We are going to see all that stuff. So the official page for Spring is uh, spring.io. Okay, so now let's understand something about this. Yeah, so why Spring? So what makes Spring with Java? What is Spring? Spring is actually a framework, a very popular framework for Java and the de facto standard for Java enterprise applications now. So if you want to develop an enterprise application, a good web application, you have to go first, Spring only. So that became like a de facto standard. So Spring is to simplify Java enterprise development. So we have actually come uh, like MVC earlier. So without any framework, we used to have MVC architecture, model V controller. Uh, we will write servlets, certain JSPs, then we have JDBC. Okay, in fact, if at all you want to use JPA, you will have the Hibernate, and then you have, you have um, then EJB is coming up. Later, uh, we have moved to some framework like Struts in the beginning. And later, uh, we have come up with Spring and Spring has become a de facto standard now. Okay, so it in one sentence you want to say, Spring actually makes Java enterprise development very simple. Okay, so it's a very popular framework for building Java applications. And it provides large number of helper classes and annotations. So many annotations. We are going to understand all of them. Okay, so what are the goals of Spring? Lightweight development with Java POJOs. So POJO is a plain old Java object. Just a Java class is a POJO. Customer class. Class, customer, and what are the data? And getters, setters, constructors, to string, and all the boilerplate code. If you want a student, a student class with student data and setters, getters, constructors, and all these things. So the class that we write like that is actually called as a POJO. So Spring uses these POJOs to have the data and later it can map it to a database or it can map it to XML or it can map this to a JSON. Now JSON is the standard, or it can actually map it to a form. So there are four kinds of binding that we are going to understand actually. Uh, 
a class to form, form to a class, a class to JSON and JSON to a class, a class to XML and XML to class, and a class to database table and database table to a class. So these all uh, forms of binding is available and Spring actually um, makes use of these POJOs. And later we can actually speak of those bindings. And that's how the development will happen in the Spring. And Spring co actually comes up with the, the principle called dependency injection, which is part of inversion control. So now through this dependency injection, we'll, we can actually achieve loose coupling. So no, there are no interdependencies. And through in dependency injection, we are, as a developers or the programmers, we are not going to create objects. We just actually inject them. Our framework actually inject them. So we just need to tell actually by using certain annotation. Okay. So framework makes these dependencies ready for us. So we just have to use it by injecting it. For that, we have annotations, auto void annotation. Automatically, the object is going to void to my application available to my program. Okay, so dependent injection is one of the major principles the Spring framework works on with. And by using Spring, you will minimize much of the boilerplate Java code. So, so much of XML configurations we have to write in the Spring. Okay. Even then, so much of the boilerplate can be minimized. So, if you see at uh, Spring, framework components. So we have majorly uh, data access and integration uh, related things, web related things. Then we have AOP related aspect oriented programming. Then we have the core container, the spring core container, and we have uh, test related things also. So coming to the core, actually the core container of the spring framework, we have beans. So beans are nothing but the POJOs. Okay, we have a core model. We have a context model. We have SPL, Spring Expression Language. These are all to manage the beans actually. So beans and bean dependencies, all these things will be taken care of at the core level. And if at all you are going for Spring AOP, Spring Aspect Oriented Programming, then we have AOP aspects, this instrumentation, messaging, all these things will be coming up. And as part of this code, we are not actually much interested towards the AOP, but all others are here. So we are going to write uh, web applications, Spring Web. So where we have uh, WebSocket, Servlets, Web, Portlet. Portlet is any plugin service. And Servlets are at the background for our Spring. Even though directly we will plan to be writing the Servlets, but Spring Framework provides the servlets for us. And coming to the data access and integration, we have JDBC, Java Database Connectivity, ORM, Object Relational Mapping, and Object XML Mapping, and uh, JMS, Java Mail Service. And of course, transactions. So we can do transaction management. So whenever we are actually integrating with any database, and whenever we are accessing data, and we have test also, so we can actually uh, test driven development. TDD is possible with uh, Spring actually. And we have the provision to write test cases and do as part of our application itself. So these are the core components of a Spring uh, framework briefly. So all of them we are going to use actually as part of our uh, sessions. So coming to the core container, so we have seen already bean score. Uh, Spring Expression Language and Context. These are all for uh, factory for creating beans, manage bean dependencies. So these are this is actually the major uh, objective of this core container. Then if you go for web layer, so all web related classes are available over here. And this will be the home of uh, Spring MVC framework. Spring web means we'll have MVC model with controller. So we have the controller servlets will be there. We have a model object that is supplied by the Spring object where we can actually add data and send the model back to the view. 
And then we have data X layer, we have JDBC, ORM, object relation mapping, OXM, transactions, JMS. So object relation mapping integration with Hibernate. And Hibernate is an implementation of JPA, Java Persistence API. And JPA provides certain repositories and provides free CRUD operations to use. And we can straight away make transaction management with the help of certain annotations, transactional annotation. And we have so much, so many JDBC helper classes. We have JDBC template and reduce your JDBC code by 50%. Then coming to the test layer, we have unit testing, we have integration, and we can actually mock objects. So Spring supports test-driven development, TDD, mock objects and out-of-container testing. Apart from that, and Spring has certain projects also, so which we have seen actually in Spring.io. There are additional Spring modules built on top of the Spring framework. So we have Spring Cloud, we are going to use when we are working with microservices. We have Spring Data and we have uh, Spring Rust as well and Spring Batch, Spring Security, Spring Web Services and others. These are all the projects uh, on top of the Spring framework. Okay, so now why we require Spring Boot actually? So Spring Framework is there um, uh, since the beginning in two before 2010 itself, we have the Spring Framework developed by Rod Johnson and people using Spring Framework. But what was actually uh, uh, the problem? Uh, why actually we have Spring Boot? Why you are speaking today Spring Boot? So what's the problem? So building a traditional Spring applications is really hard. Spring Framework is the de facto standard, but building traditional Spring applications is really hard. Because, so we need to have so many jar dependencies to be added. So many jars we have to download and we have to add. So many. And there are so many configurations, XML configurations. And we need to install all of our web servers, database servers, everything manually. Okay. So these are all just to make your application ready. Just to get the basic application ready, you need to do all these things. So many jars have to be downloaded and you have to make them available at the class path. That's a tough thing because we have to find, we have to download and we have to make them available in our class path. And we have to write so many configurations. Too much, too much configuration in the spring. That is XML configuration. Of course, Java annotation based configurations also there. And we need to install servers as well. Okay, so to solve this, now we have the Spring Boot solution. What Spring Boot, spring boot does actually? Spring Boot works on top of Spring Framework. So Spring Boot makes it easier to get started with Spring application development. So building traditional Spring applications is hard. In order to make it easy, in order to make it simpler, in order to make it faster, the Spring Boot has come up. So it minimizes so much amount of manual configurations. You need not to do so much of manual configurations. Auto configurations will happen based on the properties files that you mentioned. And all jars actually will be av made available to your class path. The Spring Boot will take care. So it helps to resolve so many dependency conflicts. It uses either Maven or Gradle, both are the project management tools, the built tools. We are actually going ahead with Maven here. In fact, you can actually do with Gradle also. Spring Boot uses Maven to resolve dependency conflicts and to get all the dependencies that have been mentioned as part of your project object file. And Spring Boot also provides an embedded HTTP server so we can get it, get started very quickly. 
So you need not to manually install the server and you need not to set. Spring Boot by default comes up with the embedded HTTP server. So your application, whatever writing, straight away runs in that particular embedded server. So it provides SAMCAT, JT or Undertow. So we can actually choose whatever. The default, we are going to use SAMCAT, which runs on 8080. Not only just the HTTP server, it will provide the database management system also. It will provide H2DB. So you can straight away create some tables, some database and tables in the H2 and we can actually work. So it makes, Spring makes actually Spring development so easy. So if you go actually and look at that Spring.io about Spring Boot, it actually written like this. So from, it is from the official page of the Spring.io. Spring Boot makes it easy to create standalone production grade spring based applications that you can just run. You can simply create a spring application. I will show you how very soon. Okay, and what are the features? It creates standalone spring applications and it has embedded Tomcat, JT or Undertow. So directly you have the server available and you are code that runs in that particular server. So you need not to deploy separately war files into your server. <clears throat> Otherwise, we have to create a war file, web archive file, and we have to deploy into the server. But now you have directly the embedded server. So whenever you run, you just say run on the server and it will run. It, it is so easy, so fast. And Spring Boot provides opinionated starter dependencies to simplify your build configuration. Spring Boot provides the starter dependencies. So you want to connect to database, it says use Spring Data. And you want to connect to database, you require a driver, it will provide you the driver. It will give you the starter dependency for that. You want to write web application, it provides you Spring Web. The starter dependency so that you can quickly start your application and automatically the configuration are going to get built. So automatically configure Spring and third party libraries wherever possible. Provide production ready features such as metrics, health checks and actualized configuration. So we have for that we have one Spring project that is called Spring Actuator. With the help of that, we can actually do this metrics and health checks. Absolutely no code generation and no requirement for XML configuration. In the Spring framework, we used to have much of XML configuration. And in the Spring Boot, no XML configuration. Absolutely no XML configuration. Everything is based on simple annotations. Okay, so this is Spring versus Spring Boot. So now let's understand. So Spring Boot uses Spring behind the scenes. So many people will confuse what is Spring Boot and what is Spring. Spring Boot, imagine like a project, a Spring project, which works on the Spring framework and which uses Spring behind the scenes. And Spring Boot simply makes it easier to use a Spring. Spring is there to make it easy, to make your Spring Application development, so easy. Yeah, and Spring Boot comes up with uh, Spring Initializer. So this is going to be our next video. What the Spring Initializer will do? It quickly create a starter Spring Boot project for you. You will have something like this. Start.spring.io. This is where you can actually access Spring Initializer. Okay, so once you go there, you will be selecting the dependencies and you can create Maven or Gradle project and you can actually import uh, the project which has got generated to your IDE, either Eclipse or IntelliJ and it means whatever actually. So let me actually show you this. So once I say start.spring.io, so I'm straight away going to the Spring Initializer. So now you can actually see here what is the project? Which project we are going to create? So now we are going to create Maven projects for all this course. And what are the languages? We are going to select Java. 
and we can have we have to choose actually uh, what is the version that we are going to use so we are going to use 3.2.2 this is the latest spring boot version spring 3 so we have 3.2.2 and we have of course snapshots also it's not recommended to use the snapshots then we have to give uh, the project metadata the project coordinates otherwise we can say what is a group and what is uh, the artifact project name okay so the name of that artifact and description of the project and what is the package in a group and what is that particular package so what kind of packaging you want you want a jar packaging or war packaging by default spring boot actually takes jar packaging only and which version of the java you are going to use 21 or 17 so spring boot 3 requires minimum 17 so that's why uh, it's asking 21 or 17 because both 17 and 21 are stable versions they have lds support actually so here you need to for provide the details and we can actually add dependencies over here so for example i am doing a web application so i need to go for spring web so i need to just type web i will actually get spring web actually here so spring web is to include uh, is to build web applications including restful services and of course mvc applications also and when you say Spring Web, you are going to have this Apache Tomcat available as the default embedded container. You have a server container that is going to come up with Tomcat. In the same fashion, you, you can actually select so many. For example, you want Lombok. You can actually do Lombok. Java annotation library, which helps to reduce boilerplate code. So it's a bean management thing. So like that, we can actually go for, uh, let's say, Spring Dev Tools. So Spring Dev Tools will provide faster application restarts, live relo reload. Okay, so when you when you actually have Spring Tools, then your application need not to be deployed again and again. So your application will automatically get restarted when you change something. So I'm going to explain all these uh, dependencies with the starter names actually. Spring Boot Starter Web, Spring Boot uh, Dev Tools, Okay, Lombok, and we have starter test. We have starter data GPA. We have starter data rest. Okay, so so many are there. Actually, I'm going to tell you all of these things. So here, uh, by using Spring Initializer, we can actually make our project. And we can actually generate this project and we can import this generated project into our IDE quickly. So the point here, what we're going to discuss is, so Spring Boot provides you a Spring Initializer so that you can quickly create a Spring Boot project and you will have all the dependencies available and automatically those configurations will be done. So you don't have to do manually any configuration. Automatically it will happen whenever you add dependencies. Okay, of course, this we are going to discuss uh, in the next video. Right, so as we discussed, Spring Boot contains embedded server and Tomcat JT undertow. So by default, we are going to have this Tomcat whenever we have the dependency Spring Web. So we need not to install any server separately and we need not to set it. So when the jar is generated, right? In the starter project, the jar file is going to get generated, right? The jar is going to have all the code that you have written and uh, the server also. So if at all we want to run the jar, from the console, we can actually run like this Java iPhone, whatever the jar file we have created. So this jar is going to have a code and the Tomcat. And if at all you want to run from the IDE, straight away we can actually run it. Now let's understand some Spring Boot misconceptions. So people uh, will confuse with Spring Framework and Spring Boot. There are certain misconceptions. Let's now understand. Them. So firstly, the Spring Boot replace Spring MVC, Spring Rate, etc. So we have these all Spring projects, right? Spring MVC, Spring REST, and we have Spring Data GPA, okay? And we have uh, so many other Spring test is there, dev tools. So these are all the projects on it, Spring Security, etc. So does Spring Boot replace all these things? No, not at all. Spring Boot actually uses these technologies, uses these Spring projects. These are all part of the Spring Framework, right? So Spring Boot uses them and makes production-ready applications. 
makes your development easy. So Spring Boot uses all of them and creates you quickly a project for you. Just if at all you want to use MVC, just need to add one dependency. You want to use Spring Rest, add one dependency. You want Spring uh, use Spring Data JPA, add one dependency. Right. So Spring Boot actually uses this technology. It's not a replacement for any of these things. Next. Does Spring Boot run code faster than regular Spring code? No, not at all. Behind the scenes, Spring Boot uses same code for Spring Framework. Spring Boot is about making it easier to get started. It minimizes much of the configurations. But in the back end, you have the Spring Boot. Behind the scenes, you have Behind the scenes, you have the Spring Framework. Spring Boot actually makes it easier to get started with. It pulls everything and makes it ready. So Spring Boot does not run faster. And it's not actually different from Spring Framework. Right? This, this is one misconception. So Spring Boot run code faster than regular Spring Code? No. Behind this, behind the scenes, Spring Framework is only there, and Spring Boot just uses them, makes you uh, to develop things faster, gives you so many things so that it becomes easy for the developers. Then, do I need a special ID for Spring Boot? Not to develop Spring Boot applications, you require a special ID? Not at all. You don't require a special ID, even though Spring Team provides you Spring Tool Shoot. That is Spring Tools 4, we have seen actually then, right? And this STS, the Spring Tool 4, available as a plugin also. So that's what we are going to see here in our Eclipse. So in Eclipse, we'll have that Spring Tools plugin installed by going to that marketplace so that we have discussed in the previous video and we will use it. Okay, so not a requirement. Whatever the ID you just you like, you can actually use it. Even you don't have a plugin also, it's fine. You can use Spring Initializer. Every time you can go to start.spring.io, create the project, generate the zip file, unzip it, and import to your IDE. That is how you can actually do it. If you have a plugin, straight away you can actually do it. Okay. Yeah. So this is about uh, the simple introduction to the Spring framework and uh, Spring versus a Spring Boot. Uh, briefly, hope you have understood. The uh, hope to see you in the next video where we are actually going to use Spring Initializer to create our Spring Boot projects. Thank you. Take care.